Hello and welcome everyone. We're excited to have you join us for today's live webcast, Winning in the Relationship Economy, where we will discuss how agencies like yours can take advantage of the LinkedIn ecosystem. Presenting today on behalf of LinkedIn is Brenna Hanley, Global Agency Associate, and Karen Manahan, Associate Marketing Manager. First, a couple housekeeping items. We invite you to ask the speakers any questions you might have using the Q&A box, and we'll take time to answer those questions during the Q&A portion following our speaker presentation. Also, we will be sending a recording of the webinar along with the slides to you via email following the event. And now, without further ado, I'm going to pass things to you, Brenna. We'll start by framing for you a little bit about how we're thinking about relationship economics. So in the past, better machinery or better information technology were what provided competitive advantage to companies and served as the springboard for economic development. Today, networks and relationships are at the core of the current wave of progress. Our identities, our voices, and our connections to others have always mattered. The key difference today is that their reach is amplified their substance and structure are more visible to ourselves and others, and their economic and personal impact can be quantified more than ever before. At LinkedIn, we're thinking about relationship economics in terms of how genuine communication and engagement in social media helps businesses improve relationships with employees and customers, and also improves bottom line. In order to prove out our theory on relationship economics, we partnered with Altimeter Group in 2014 and looked at quantitative and qualitative survey results from employees at the most socially engaged companies, and that's as defined by proprietary LinkedIn metrics, versus a con control group. What we found was that the socially engaged firms were 58% more likely to attract the top talent, 20% more likely to retain that talent, 57% more likely to get increased sales leads, and 40% more likely to be perceived as competitive. And LinkedIn is the place where these meaningful social engagements are happening. So some of you still may think of us as only a site for finding jobs, but the metrics will tell you otherwise. We're seeing seven times more engagement with content pages than jobs pages. Over 100,000 original long-form content pieces are coming through the open publishing platform, and we have over 1.5 million LinkedIn publishers. To give you an idea of the type of substantive conversations that are happening on LinkedIn, I'm going to tell you a little bit about a personal experience I recently had on the platform, and you'll see that conversation here on the right. So I was grappling with an interesting professional question about content marketing, or it was interesting to me at least. And that was, can a TV commercial be a piece of content marketing? So I decided to pose that question to my network, and the response that I saw was really astounding. So there were thoughtful responses, responses coming from people of various titles and geographies. Here you'll see Michael, Michael Brenner, who is the Chief Strategy Officer at News Cred Wang, and, and then some commentary by Eric Sicillian at WVP, which is what the biggest uh, ad agency holding company. And then this is another example from Han Ma at Taylor Strategy. And these are just a couple of examples of the many responses I received. And it was really interesting because people started playing off each other and weighing in really from all over the world. I mean, even as far as New Zealand. So it was truly an enlightening digital conversation for me. Uh, and if you're curious to know more, I actually ended up writing my own long form post about the topic. So you can read that in my LinkedIn profile, should you be so inclined. Uh, okay, so hopefully from you know my shameless plug about my post, <laughs> you can at least start to, to get an idea of the meaningful conversations about marketing and branding that are already happening on the platform. So as agencies, you want to be guiding and initiating these conversations as thought leaders. Being a socially engaged agency can lead to new business wins, building better client relations, attracting and retaining your top talent, 
as well as establishing your brand and subject matter expertise over time. So I'm just going to jump into each of these. So I guess you can think of this as a, you need a fish where the fish are fly. So more so than any other social network, senior business leaders are actively finding value and using the LinkedIn platform. I don't know if any of you saw the recent survey uh, conducted by Weber Shanwick that indicated that LinkedIn is the site used most often by CEOs. And then here you'll see luminaries like Howard Schultz and Beth Comstock contributing to the platform. And this was actually interesting for me too. So when Howard Schultz was first open to talking to the press about his controversial Race Together campaign, he actually reached out to LinkedIn's executive editor, Dan Ross, first. So before going to the Wall Street Journal or Business Insider, he contacted LinkedIn. Uh, Dan then did a video interview with Howard and also wrote this piece about it, both of which achieved very high engagement on LinkedIn. Uh, and then to the right of that, you'll see Beth Comstock, who's an example of a CMO who's extremely active on LinkedIn. Uh, she's actually an influencer and writes original content very often. I've seen posts from her coming out, you know, once, three times a month. And so here's an example of the reach and engagement that she gets with these posts. So here you can see, I think it's over 80,000 views on this one piece, um, 600 likes and 200 comments. And if you recall, you know, these comments are truly substantive. They're not just random people saying random things about the post. So again, agencies want to be having and leading these dialogues with these key marketing decision makers. So in a similar fashion, you can start to influence other stakeholders at your current client's companies by becoming more socially active on LinkedIn. So here, let's just take Agency Wonderman as an example. And this, by the way, is a completely made up example. But just so you know. So uh, let's say Wonderman works very closely with Leanne Forbes, who works out of Microsoft's New York office. Leanne is connected to some of the agency account executives that she works directly with and she follows the Wonderman company page. But let's say Carlo, her counterpart in Rome, currently has no exposure to Wonderman content. Once Leanne interacts with any piece of content coming from her agency connections or the Wonderman company page, that content will now show up on all of her first degree connections news feeds, so Carlo starts to see more and more great content coming from Wonderman. And so now, in theory, Wonderman is more salient and top of mind as Carlo considers agencies to RFP for the various product lines and campaigns he's working on. And this is just my attempt at a visualization of how that might look. So finally, becoming a more socially engaged company benefits your current and prospective employees. The more you can empower your employees as brand ambassadors, by giving them access to industry and company information and enable them to share it out to their networks, the more invested they're gonna feel about working at your company. Not to mention, we all know, you know what a small world, the agency world is. It's most likely that your next hire is one of your current employees' connections. So the more they can see what a cool and rewarding place to work your agency is, by the way, through their eyes of their most trusted sources, their friends and connections, the more likely they're going to think about your agency when they're looking for a new job. So hopefully now you're at least a little convinced that LinkedIn can benefit you through building new and existing client relations and attracting and retaining top talent. My colleague Kara will now take you through some of the more tactical strategies for how to activate. Thank you, Brenna. So how can you activate your agency influence using the LinkedIn? Ecosystem, well, lucky for you, we have a whole activation strategy. <laughs> All right, so overall, your objective should be to activate your influence on LinkedIn. And there are four key pillars that you're going to want to keep in mind. So first, you can establish your identity. Second, curate content. Third, create content. And four, amplify your, amplify your voice. All of which can help you generate opportunity on the LinkedIn platform. So something to call out is that these things aren't one-offs and they're things that you can actually 
continue to optimize and tweak as you go along. You'll constantly be learning, but these are the four things you're going to want to focus on. So first and foremost, you're going to want to create a company page if you don't yet. This is going to essentially be the, the hub of your agency on LinkedIn. It's where your prospective clients and employees go to find information about your brand, and gaining followers actually allows you to push your content directly to those audiences. Nearly 9 out of 10 members believe a company should maintain an up-to-date page on LinkedIn, so it's really important that you do this. Um, people are signing up at, on LinkedIn at a rate of more than two members per second, so having a presence on the LinkedIn platform is definitely important. Um, another thing, too, is that members actually add their current employer, and when you have a company page and they actually click on your profile, you will then be taken to the company page. So it's really important that you have a complete company page that links to your website and also showcases any great content that you have to share. So, in addition to a company page, another thing is to make sure that your leaders are also, also socially engaged on LinkedIn. So, agency leaders and marketing influencers can also help activate your brand on the platform. Again, these people at your company are viewed as representatives of your agency, and they help build your brand by creating content on LinkedIn. So here we see Laura Desmond, who's the CEO at Starcom. We see Sir Martin Sorrell. All of these huge influencers in the industry are constantly hosting content and engaging with their network. Next, another important facet of the activation strategy is to also make sure that your employees are active on LinkedIn. So your employees can also serve as brand ambassadors and extend your agency's voice. On average, um, employee networks are actually 10 times larger than a company's page, so that really underlines how valuable employee networks are. So here we actually have two leaders at Edelman. Their profiles are complete, they're well connected, they have actually over 500 connections each, and they're leveraging the published platform to build upon their personal brand as well. So whenever they have any engagements on LinkedIn, that shared with their connections, and once those connections engage, that then post throughout their networks. And again, members are more like three times more likely to actually trust a post from a company's employee than from the company directly. So it's important that your employees are actually posting valuable content from your company and then expanding their reach by leveraging their networks. Next, you're also going to want to curate content, um, and you can actually leverage LinkedIn Pulse to do this. Um, when you log in to LinkedIn, you actually will see an interest tab, and from there you can select Pulse. Um, there's a ton of content on here. You can actually follow specific topic channels that are of interest to you, and that would appear under your news when you log in there. And there's also the Discover tab, which you can see at the right which will suggest key influencers for you to follow. And once you start following all of these channels and influencers on LinkedIn, their content will show up in your feed. And it actually makes it a lot easier for you to find and access content that can be shared from your company page and your personal profile as well. So here in the picture we have BBDO, who's actually sharing content that's relevant for their audience on their company page, and that leads to our next part and the activation strategy. So besides curating content, creating content is another awesome thing to do and then sharing that. So there are two places you can do this from on LinkedIn, one of which is your company page and another is your profile. So your profile is pretty straightforward. You log in, you can share content that either you created or anything that you found valuable. Um, but the company page has pretty cool things that you can do. So First, as we mentioned, attracting a following on your company page is key, as whenever you do post, all of your followers can then see your content. Um, but you can actually also put some paid behind that and 
extend your reach by sponsoring any updates that you have to your page. Um, we know off the bat some people might not be too keen on doing advertising yet, and there's actually a pretty cool thing that you can do if you want to try that out first. So you can actually use targeted updates to segment your company page followers. So instead of just posting an update and letting it go out to every single follower you have, you can leverage targeted updates, which allow you to target your following by industry, function, seniority, geography, or language preference. So I definitely recommend giving that a try and seeing if your engagement improves. And if so, then you may want to consider sponsored updates. But whether you're doing targeted updates or just organic entirely, you actually will get analytics around all of the updates you're posting on your analytics page and your notification center. Um, the analytics page gives kind of a breakdown of your company page high level, so how many followers you're acquiring, how all of your updates are performing, and the notification center actually gives you kind of more of an up-to-date notification on all of the actions taking place on your page. So whether your page is mentioned, people are liking your updates, or following your page, that'll all go into there. So another great place to create content is on our publishing platform. This is actually open to all members. When we first launched it, we were given only influencers on the platform were given access, so all C-suite executives and any other major marketing influencers were writing, and now you have the opportunity to as well. So if you're creating content, you should definitely start posting it in our publishing platform. As of now, there are 500 influencers. Um, there are 130,000 posts a week, and today we already have 3 million posts. And a ton of agency leaders and marketing influencers are already posting. Traffic per post is actually up 150% since they're getting huge engagement, so we definitely recommend you jump on there now. So if you're thinking about writing on here, there are a few things we do recommend. We think that you should first and foremost write about things that you're familiar with, and that can also help build your personal brand and make you an expert in things that you know. Um, you should add imagery and multimedia so your posts stand out in the feed and also when members click through to read it. And also, all another thing to remember is that whenever you do publish a post, all of your connections actually receive a notification when they log in, and from there they can actually just directly read your post. And we actually also just launched new analytics, which allow you to see who's interacting with all of your posts, where the traffic's coming from, and you can get as granular as seeing who shared, or read, or commented on it as well. So you can then figure out which audience is kind of engaging with your content and who your content's resonating with. Um, if you're going to do this, another thing that I recommend is joining our LinkedIn group, Writing on LinkedIn. It's actually managed by our internal content team, and so you can get tips on writing there as well. So earlier I mentioned sponsored updates. Um, these are great because not only can you reach your followers, as I mentioned, on your company page, but it actually allows you to take your updates and then target across the entire LinkedIn member audience. So once you've created or curated content you want to share with your network on your company page, you can amplify it by putting paid behind. So while, well, as I mentioned, um, if you're using organic updates, that'll only go to your page, but really think it's key to sponsor in order to reach other influential marketers and media stakeholders who may not be following your page yet. Um, to give it a try, we think you should probably start with a launch budget, and then depending on whether or not you see performance that you'd like, you can then decide to invest more, stick to organic. Um, there's a self-serve option for this where you can target by in CPM or CPC. So if your goal is to kind of just increase awareness, we recommend taking the CPM route. And if you want to drive members to a specific page or to have them take a certain action somewhere, we recommend CPC. So while sponsor updates are a great way to amplify your voice, there are other best practices that we have. Um, first, we think the content calendar is key. 
so you're not really scrambling for content, um, you're going to want to keep an active presence across the platform. So if you have a company page, you're going to want to be updating and sharing content that's valuable to your audience. And having a content cal calendar allows you to have kind of a place to refer back to so you don't scramble and are at a loss of what to share. Um, next, you definitely want to cross-promote your content. So as we mentioned, you should be sharing it on your company page, your employees should be sharing it, as well as your leadership. And all of these entities can actually create content as well. Um, there are actually tools that you can leverage for employee amplification, which is our next one. So a lot of times employees are hesitant to share content across networks because they're not sure what to write and are just hesitant in general. So you can actually check out platforms like Gagalamp or Everyone's Social or Social Course that actually allow someone at your company to grab content, put it in somewhere, and then once people log in, they can then choose to share that, and it has messaging in there and everything. So definitely check that out if you feel like that would be helpful. Uh, next are groups. So something to keep in mind is that members opt into groups themselves. So when you're looking to share content, we definitely think you should be posting it in groups. And then last but not least, you should follow LinkedIn Pulse on Twitter and share and tweet your posts to that channel. So it could then be amplified if someone managing our LinkedIn Pulse account comes across it. So with that, I will hand things back to Brenna, who will then give some examples of agencies who are doing it right on the LinkedIn ecosystem. Great. Uh, so I think this slide pretty much explained where we are headed. Uh, okay. So one good example to refer to as you set up your agency preference is Ogilvy. Uh, here you'll see Ogilvy posting regular updates in the form of, you know, it could be anything recapping conferences is what they're doing in this one. Um, they're also mixing in imagery. You can see a nice range. Well, again, I'm only showing you two, but uh, if you actually check out the page, you'll see a mix of, you know, nice, easy to understand images combined with actual uh, longer form content pieces. Uh, in this post, the image I'm showing you here, Ogilvy features their Friday Ogilvyism. And so this has really become something that people look forward to because Ogilvy regularly schedules these on Fridays. And it's actually taken off so much so that sometimes uh, people will proactively preempt these and start posting their own favorite Ogilvyism. So I think that to the extent that you can sort of establish a recurring theme, uh, the more traction you'll probably gain against uh, the marketing audiences. SMG is another agency uh, leveraging LinkedIn to its full extent. You know, they have everything from a robust company page, regular updates, to complete leadership and employee profiles. Uh, their CEO, Laura Desmond, as well as their regular employees, are often contributing long-form thought leadership posts to LinkedIn. So here you'll see Circle, just some of the posts already published by Laura. Um, and then we're just bringing out uh, one of those just so you can see what it looks like with the hero image and then the text behind that, as well as their company page to the right. So SMG uh, also effectively cross-promotes content coming from people in the company page updates. So here you see a piece Laura published in her individual profile being cross-promoted to gain additional reach to the company page. And you can see, you know, it's pretty significant. This is just a post that costs nothing, and she posted it to her profile, and it already got over 1,000 likes, 79 comments, and then so far from the company page, just a little over 26, but I would anticipate that um, that number would probably be higher if we looked at it now and, again, get higher as Starcom Media Vest Group gets more followers. Okay, so you know, I think we'll probably end early, but uh, of course we have time for questions, so I will check to see uh, who has input questions. But in summary, you want to invest in relationship economics on LinkedIn by first establishing your brand identity, and that's through company pages, leadership, and employee profiles. Then curate and create relevant and useful content. And again, that can come in the form of the open publishing platform for everyone 
company posts as well as influencer posts. And then finally, you want to amplify that voice through sponsored updates and cross-promoting that content between you know, your employees, your leaders, and the company page, just as SMG did. And ultimately, these actions will allow your agency to establish thought leadership and effectively win new business, build client relations, and retrain, retain and attract top talent. So thanks again for joining us, and I'm just going to go now and see if we have any questions. Okay, so uh, one question is, can you give it us a couple more examples of brands outside of agencies doing it right on LinkedIn? Um, so for me, I would probably point to GE, and I know we showed Beth Comstock as an example, but you'll see they're constantly updating um, their company page, and we recommend you know, at least a couple of updates a week. So they're doing that, and again, it's a nice combination of images, infographics, and longer form pieces. Um, I don't know, Kara, if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, definitely. Um, two company pages for me that really stand out are Procter & Gamble and L'Oreal. Um, so as you mentioned, they're both actively posting. They're sharing content with their followers. Um, they actually also have career pages that kind of highlight what it's like to work there, and they even have a video and stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, Procter & Gamble actually uses sponsored updates, so they see a lot of engagement from those. And they also have a showcase page for Secret Deodorant, which is cool because they then post content that's relevant for that audience because it's different from the general Procter & Gamble page. And then for L'Oreal, they do a lot of cool things. Um, they use targeted updates, and they leverage it in a way that whenever they target different countries, they actually put the posts in those languages. So when their followers that speak those languages log in, they actually see those in their feed as opposed to ones that they can't read. <laughs> um, and they actually also create content whenever they hit milestones on LinkedIn, which I think is pretty cool. So when they hit certain thresholds, they either like share videos or have creative that they share that's specifically for LinkedIn. So I feel like that resonates with their followers a lot and keeps them kind of coming back. Great. Um, and then I'm just seeing another one. Uh, what other agency leaders are writing content uh, like Laura Desmond? And so I know, I think Kara had a slide that shows Samart Sorrell. So Samart Sorrell has a very robust profile, and he also posts pretty thoughtful uh, posts regularly. And as well, as you could also check out Rob Norman at Group M, his profile, or Alex Jekowitz at uh, Group SJR. And another one that comes to mind would be David Sable of YNR. So those are just some other agency executives who are already leveraging the publishing platform. And then this isn't a question, but just to make sure everyone's clear, the way you can start writing and accessing the publishing platform is just if you go to your LinkedIn profile, uh, you should see right under your name and picture there's a couple of different options for actions you can take. The first is share an update, the second is upload media, and the third is publish a post. So once you click on publish a post, that'll take you right into the um, screen where it's pretty self-explanatory just to add an image and add in your text for your post, and that can be copy and pasted easily from Word. Okay, uh, and that's all the questions I'm seeing now, unless uh, Kara or Cassandra, you're seeing anything else. Yeah, I actually do see one. So someone asked if you have a blog on your ex existing website, can you publish it on LinkedIn too? Yeah, you definitely can. So we see a lot of our members do that, um, as long as at the end of your post, you actually then kind of cite where it or originally was published. So I've seen um, employees at Marketo do that with their up their blog posts and across other companies as well. So yeah, definitely leverage the publishing platforms as another kind of channel for you to get more reach on any content that you're creating. I think that might be all the time we have for questions. So thanks everyone for joining us for today's webinar. Um, we'll be sending a recording, so if you came on late or want to share it with anyone, you can forward them the link you'll be receiving. And with that, have a great day.